Today, uh, we are going to talk about the memory API. In this lecture, we'll explain the details of basic APIs that will deal with the virtual memory. They include malloc free, calloc realloc, uh, brk, sbrk, and mmap, and mmmap. When a process is first created, it allocates virtual address space for a code, data, heap, and a stack. Code, data, heap, and a stack. In this picture, operating system has allocated four kilobyte pages for stack and heap, respectively. The program uses malloc, free, calloc, or realloc to manage the memory chunks within a heap. These functions are defined in Lips library, and they are all library calls. So when a program calls these functions, they do not change. They do not change the protection mode or privilege mode of, of, of the program. These functions are responsible for managing the virtual memory areas in the heap. Um, also, in addition to Lips library, there are a number of system cores that are used to adjust the size of the virtual memory allocated to process. They include BRK, SBRK, and MMAP. These are all system cores. Um, BRK and SBRK are used to adjust the breakpoint. And breakpoint is an uh, end address of the heap. First function we're dealing with is malloc. Malloc is defined in a Lips library. It's a library call. It allocates memory region on the heap. It takes the size of a memory chunk that needs to be allocated. When it succeeds, it returns a pointer to a memory chunk. Another interesting function is uh, size of. Size of function returns the size of a variable or the size of an object. Um, there are two distinct usage as uh, below. First one is um, the first, the size function is used to return the size of an array. In this example, actual size of an array is determined at runtime. So in this case, size of returns a value at runtime. On the other hand, uh, in the example below, um, x is an array of integer of 10 elements. So uh, size of x is governed, determined at compile time. So it prints 40. So in the first example, the size of uh, x is the size of pointer to an integer array. So it prints out 4. Another function is free. Free deallocates the memory chunks point by PTR. It accepts a pointer to an object. And um, the important thing is the pointer PTR, which is an argument to free, should point to the address of the memory chunks that has been allocated by malloc or other uh, memory allocation functions such as malloc, calloc, and realloc. Let's look at an example. Um, in this example, the stack starts from the 16 kilobyte, and then heap starts. The heap starts from 2 kilobytes. And in a program, uh, a local variable for a pointer to integer has been defined. So the variable pi resides at the stack. And then uh, the program calls malloc. 16 because size of integer times 4 and size of integer returns 4 so 4 times 4 equals 16. So um, this malloc call returns 16 byte memory chunks and the address starting address of the memory chunk. As a result the 16 byte is allocated from the heap and malloc returns the pointers uh, to the memory object. So the pointer pi contains becomes to contain the starting address of the memory chunk that has been just allocated. And next thing is free. Now we call free. Then 
um, as a, uh, the free function deallocates the memory chunk that has been pointed by pi. Let us list up the important mistakes we make when you use an alloc. The first frequent mistake is to forgetting allocate memory. In the example below, we copy a string pointed by src to the DSP pointer. There is a SLC pointer and it contains a h e l l o five character string hello and we copy it to destination. Uh, it works fine except that DST does not have its own memory chunks. So um, this strcpi tries to copy the h e l l o to the DSP pointer that does not have any valid address allocated. What is going to happen? Um, if the pointer DST contains some weird value that can be wrong address space outside the valid address region, the OS will intervene when this program makes a copy and will abort the process with segmentation fault message. This is the lucky case, since at least you know that there was something wrong and the program gets killed. The worst scenario is that as a result of executing a CRCPI function, the program executes just fine except that it silently returns totally incorrect result because the HELL was copied some other thread address space. In that case, it is very difficult to find the source of the problem and source of the incorrect behavior. Correct code DST, DST gets allocated a sufficient amount of memory to copy the hello. So it copies, uh, it first allocated an uh, amount of memory chunks that whose size is string length plus one. The second frequent mistake is not allocating enough memory. In this example, we copy hello string to the destination as before. This time, the pointer DST points to the valid memory chunk. It gets allocated a uh, malloc amount of uh, malloc, and the size of the memory chunk it is allocated corresponds to length of SRC. Um, the length of string hello is six because it has H E L L O. This is five, five characters and string is null terminated character array. So at the end, it has one byte that represent null character string. So total is six. So to make copy of string hello, it requires array of six character string. In this example, however, DST gets allocated only for five character memory chunk. So the pro programmer forget to allocate one more byte in addition to the length of the string. Um, if you uh, run this program, the program may work fine without generating any errors, but the sixth character of string hello will be copied but that is outside the null, outside the allocated memory region. So, um, if the program calls malloc again to allocate a new memory chunk, then the newly allocated memory chunk will start from this part where null character is copied. So, if a program calls malloc to allocate a new memory chunk and writes some contents to the newly allocated chunk, then this null character will be overwritten. If a program writes some contents to the newly allocated memory chunk, then we can see what the problem is. Um, now, the function hello h e l l sorry the character string hello h e l l o does not have terminator so when you perform copy of dst string to somewhere else then it will goes into the infinite loop because um because null character is written the structure of character st string that has been containing hello was now destroyed 
The third mistake is to forget to initialize when allocating a memory. Let's look at an example. In this program, pointer x points to the memory chunk that has been allocated by some number, it's 4 byte. And then without saving any values to this memory chunk, the program prints the value pointed by x. So it is an access to initialized memory. Well, at best, it is meaningless attempt. Or frequently, it intentionally tries to read the memory without initializing, and it is an attempt to read the content that has been written by another process or another thread. Uh, this is typical malicious hacking attack. Anyway, this uh, so you should you should not forget that when you allocate a memory, you have to initialize it. The fourth mistake is memory leak. Every memory allocation should have matching free function call. Otherwise, it causes a program to allocate memory but does not return when it finishes reading using it. This is called memory leak. Memory leak can be a serious issue if a program cons if the programming concern is some kind of daemon that runs for months, then it may keep allocating uh, memory again and again and again, and eventually it will run out of memory. The operating system is, is designed to kill such process for excessive memory performance consumption. So let's consider this example. There is, this is an ex extreme example. There is an infinite loop, and within the loop it calls malloc of 4 bytes. So this program asking for 4 bytes forever without returning it. And then the heap and then um, at, the, at the beginning of our, our lecture, uh, we have allocated four kilobyte page for a heap. And then the Lips library will allocate in four bytes over again from the four kilobytes heap. And then eventually the four kilobyte heap was depleted because it returns all the four byte chunks. This is four byte. And then all are allocated. And then at that point, uh, Lipsy library asked the operating system to give him more page for a heap. Then operating system will extend the heap size. And then again, it will use up all its 4 kilobyte. And then it uses another page for the heap. So heap size grows and grows and grows and grows. And of course, the operating system sets a limit on the size of the heap a process can acquire. If a process heap size exceeds that threshold, then the operating system kills that program. So that is called memory leak. Another problem is dangling pointer. Um, dangling pointer is a pointer that points to invalid address space. It happens when you free the memory while it is being used. Let's look at the example. There are two pointers. A and B, and then A points to the head of the linked list. So it has three nodes in the system. And then the pointer B points to the second node in the list. So um, B points to a node that belongs to the linked list pointed by A. Somehow B calls free. And then Lipsy library uh, frees the memory chunks uh, pointed by B. So it is returned. And then this memory chunk can be allocated to the other thread for or for other use. In that case, the first node of linked list that is pointed by A, that has been pointing to the second node, but B just freed it. So now the, this pointer, the pointer of the first node of the linked list points to the node that has been already deallocated. So pointer becomes invalid. That's called dangling pointer. So uh, in this example, there are two pointers, pointer A and pointer B. And this is stack. 
and um, in the heap there are three nodes. So A points to the first node and then the first node points to the second node. The second node points to the third node. For example, let's say this is an example. And then um, application cars a function free with parameter b. Then it points to whatever nodes that has been pointed by b, which is this node. So as a result, the pointer that has been pointing to the second node becomes invalid, and also the third node cannot be accessed. So dangling pointer is a pointer that points to the invalid address space. Another um, a critical mistake is um, free the memory that has been freed already. Once the memory is free, then that memory chunk is no longer being used. Then Lipsy library writes a free function based on the assumption that um, the pointer that has been supplied by the application has been being used. But if the application supplies the pointer to the free and the pointer is already free, then Lipsy library gets confused and we do not know what will happen. We're going to deal with the details of free algorithm in the next section and we will get a detail about, detailed idea about how the program is going to behave and how the program will malfunction. The second uh, incorrect usage of free is free the memory that was not allocated by malloc. Let's look at this example. Um, there's, there's pointer x and this is integer pointer and it gets allocated an integer variable. And then somehow the programmer or application developer has made a mistake to free x plus 12. And this is uh, not the start address of the malloc chunk. So the again the lips gets confused and we don't know what will happen. There is other memory APIs such as calloc and realloc. Calloc allocates memory and initializes the values of the memory with zeros before returning. As you can see, um, calloc is going to be more expensive, expensive and time consuming because you have to write all zeros to the memory chunk it has been created. And calloc gets two parameters. First one is number of objects to allocate and the size of an object. And there is another function, realloc. It has two parameters. First parameter is pointer and the second parameter is size. Uh, realloc changes the size of the memory block. Uh, first pointer, pointer to the memory block allocated with malloc, calloc, or realloc. And if an application wants to extend the memory block or shrink the memory block, then we can use realloc. And size, which is the second uh, parameter of realloc, is a new size for the memory block. And um, we have been dealing with the library calls that has that were defined in Lipsy. Now let's deal with the system cores. There are two important system cores: the break, BRK, and set break. BRK sets the breakpoint to address, but SBRK specifies the increment, so it increases the breakpoint by increment. Um, so when um, application has used up all his heap space, then the Lipsy library asks operating system to expand the heap. Um, the end point of the heap is called break. So uh, break denotes the location of the end of the heap in the address space. 
break BRK system core sets the value of break with a new address. The system core SBRK increases the break by increment. So that is the role of BRK and SBRK. Again, these are all system cores. When an uh, application calls malloc, uh, within the body of malloc, if there is not enough memory, then it calls BRK within malloc. But remember, uh, in normal situation, programmers should never directly call either BRK or SBRK within the application program. And there is another important um, system call, cars and map. Um, it is an abbrevi abbreviation for memory map. Memory map. It has a bunch of parameters, so I'm going to explain it one by one in the next slide. Anyway, the most important concept is mmap allocate a memory region of length at pointed by PTR. If PTR is zero, then application, um, then the operating system allocates the memory chunks of length at its own address space and returns the value. If file descript is negative, um, it associates the region to file FD and starting at offset. Um, mmap can create two different types of region. First one is file vector region. The another one is an anonymous region. Let's look at the code. Um, this is mmap, and the PTR is null, which means that the application doesn't want to specify the virtual address it wants to create the address at. So operating system can create a memory chunk at arbitrary address in the virtual address space. And this is the size of the address region it wants to create. So it corresponds to 40 bytes. A bit uh, looks small memory chunk. And then um, uh, it says that this memory chunk can be shared between processes. And then this is file, file descriptor, and this is offset. So uh, in this mmap, it means that uh, this application wants to map a 40 bytes from st starting of the file descriptor FD to some region in the memory virtual address space of 40 bytes by creating a new memory region. This is um, the region created by mmap is not heap, it's not data, it's not stack. It's an independent, newly created memory segment of size 40 bytes. So um, when you write something or when you store something to this memory region, for example, you do like point PTR is one, then um, the value of one is directly saved to this file because every memory address space in this newly allocated memory region is mapped to the file. This is file backed memory region. Uh, another type of memory region that can be created by mmap is anonymous region. Um, it is counterpart of file vector region. So anonymous region does not have its disk counterpart. Let's look at an example. This is mmap, then first one null as before, and 40 bytes. And then as a third, third flag, um, it specifies map underbar anonymous, and file descriptor is minus one, which means that this mmap does not have any back file backed disk space. And then, uh, as a result uh, of executing this mmap, the operating system returns a 40 bytes memory chunk in its virtual address space and return the address of the virtual address space region to PTR. That's the role of mmap. 
So uh, MF system core can be used by the application uh, to create a new memory chunks in its virtual address space. Uh, let's summarize. In this section, uh, we uh, explained um, various memory API, including libc and system core. In libc library calls, we dealt with malloc, free, calloc, and realloc. And then for uh, system cores that deal with memory chunks, we have explained brk, sbrk, and mf.